When we were training service people back in a dealership I was involved with, we came up with kind of a mental checklist referring to four letters, B-T-T-B. When a serviceman would come to the job site, he would set his tools down, repeat those letters, and then start a systematic approach to servicing. The first letter, B, is check the bypass. On the 5600 valve, when the v handle points straight back towards the pipes, the unit's in the service position. When it's rotated 90 degrees, you're in the bypass position. The difficult time comes is when you have a three-hand valve bypass, where you have the two valves on the inlet and outlet valve and the interconnecting bypass valve. The first T that we come to is test the water. Test the raw water for hardness and iron content and compensate for the iron that you have in the water. An example of this would be 20 grain water and three parts per million of iron. Each part per million of iron consider as four grains of hardness. So for this example, the three parts per million equals 12 grains of hardness plus the 20 grains of hardness from the original check. So we would want to set the equipment up for 32 grains of hardness. Also have the man check the hot and cold condition water. The hot water heater in any plumbing system tells you something that happened a few days ago. A 40 gallon hot water heater takes 80 to 120 gallons of usage to flush out from hard to soft or soft to hard. And this is telling you something that has happened a few days ago. Let's say you go to the job site, remove the cover off the timer, take a look and the unit recycled last night. You check the cold water that comes directly out of the water conditioning unit. It's zero soft. You check the hot water and possibly it could be 15, 14 grains hard on that 20 grain a hardness example I gave previously. The unit is going through the cycles, but for some reason it's not keeping up from cycle to cycle. Let's say you go there and just the opposite is happening. You take a look at the timer assembly and the unit's going to regenerate tonight or possibly tomorrow night. Again, checking the cold water right out of the water conditioning unit you may have hard water. Checking the hot water heater, again, it may not be total hard or total soft, but something in between. Again, an example of running short of capacity. The areas that I used to work running short of capacity primarily ran into toilets running. When you lift the back of the toilet tank off and look where the overflow is, if that level of water is right near the top or dribbling over into the overflow, at let's say a pint a minute. That's like adding an additional 172 gallons in a 24 hour period. Whether it's a day clock or a meter type version, you never set the program up to compensate for that. Also, I would have calls right after the holidays, 4th of July, Thanksgiving, New Year's, Christmas, where again, you set the equipment up for three to four people in a family, but now for the holidays, you have 20, 30 people over using the conditioned water. Additional people in the family could also mean small infants. A small infant uses just as much, if not more, conditioned water as an adult, with the additional washing that's involved with the clothes. The next T is checking the timer. The timer on a water conditioning unit is just like an electric alarm clock. If you don't have the current time of day set, your alarm time is going to be off. If the alarm time or regeneration time on your water conditioning unit is, let's say, regenerating at 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, the time when people are getting up and taking showers, internally the control valve bypasses hard water to the system. During the showers, you're putting all that hard water into the hot water heater and again, taking two to three times its usage to flush it out will probably take until the next regeneration until that hot water heater is back in a softened position. But then again, you're regenerating and you're producing hard water on a continuing type basis. Units that are installed in basements where they've uh, re redone the basement into rec rooms. Many people who do their rec rooms like to rewire the basement so when they go upstairs and shut the lights off, they also shut all the power off in the basement, 
also shutting down the water conditioning unit. That timer will be off and when you go down there turning the lights on you'll energize and you'll think something has happened to the let's say the timer or the outlet circuit. But making sure you have a live outlet at all times. Also plugging into pull chain sockets make sure again that you have a live circuit at all times. The other thing checking with the timer those of you who use 24 volt systems and your outside or inside uh, transformer, step down type of transformer. You may have to use a probe light, probe tester, circuit tester to check to see that you have a live circuit going into your transformer and also a live circuit coming out of the transformer energizing the unit. The last letter B, checking the brine tank. For the most obvious, checking for salt. But also when you do check for salt, looking and seeing that the salt level is always above the water level. Once the salt level gets below the water level, your concentration of brine is greatly diluted. You're basing all your regeneration capacities, whether it's day clock or metered equipment, on 100% concentrated brine. So salt level is very important. Also, when you do come to the unit, the brine tank, and lift the lid off, you'll see one of three conditions in the brine tank with the water level. Either the water level will be extremely high, very low, or normal. Let's say you hit the first condition. The water level in the brine tank is extremely high. Looking at the back of the unit, the only way water can get back into the brine tank is if this poppet valve right here is pushed open. When you push that open, Water goes back into the brine tank and when it's done filling on a time brine, time brine basis, that poppet valve has to snap shut 100%. If for some reason some foreign material or through wear and use, the valve does not 100% shut off, water will continue to drip back into the brine tank, the water level will get higher and higher. To check for this very easily with the unit in a service position, Disconnect the poly tubing at the brass fitting here or in the brine tank. No water should be coming out of that fitting at all. If you get a constant drip or water leaking out, you know that that brine poppet valve is the key thing to key into. Also on all time brine refill units, whenever a unit goes through its regeneration cycle and you don't draw all the brine solution out of the brine tank, the unit doesn't know it and it still puts more water back in. That area, key area to check, would be in the injector area, which will be right underneath this cap assembly. Let's take a look at the second condition, if you had low water in the brine tank. Again, the only way water can get back into the brine tank is if that brine poppet valve, that spring-loaded valve, is pushed open. When that happens, line pressure goes into this brass fitting right here, and inside that brass fitting is a small rubber washer. That controls the water back into the brine tank at a certain flow rate, either a quarter, a half a gallon a minute, or one gallon a minute. If for some reason that small rubber washer becomes partially plugged up with foreign material or whatever, it's not going to allow the water to go back at the correct flow rate. The timer times itself out, and your level, liquid level will be much lower than what you normally had set it for. The third condition is the most difficult one because you've checked the other items, the bypass, the additional people in a family. In this instance, I would tell the man now to, to take the cover off the unit and to start cycling the unit through. Cycle the unit into the backwash position. In this position, you should hear a high flow rate going, coming to the drain. Advance it to the brine and slow rinse position. In this position, the flow rate at the drain should be greatly reduced, probably a third to a half a gallon a minute. Advance it a little bit further into the rapid rinse and settling rinse positions, and again, you should hear a high flow rate running at the drain. High flow rate, low, and high flow rate are normal cycles of operation. If for some reason that the flow rate at the drain never changes and remains constant, then is the time to check where the discharge is going from the water conditioning unit, whether it be polytubing, PVC, solid copper, or galvanized. Make sure there are no restrictions at that end discharge point. If you're using polytubing, 
follow the poly tubing back if it's through the floor joists or behind uh, various appliances and make sure that there's no restrictions in the tubing assembly. And then follow the drain all the way back into the drain port. At this time, if all of the there are no restrictions, we'll take a look a little bit later into the drain port and show you what to take a look at. BTTB, four easy checkpoints, at the most will take you five minutes to check out a unit, but it'll key you into over two-thirds of your service calls.